told at the late antiquity Roman Living History Festival, Bononia Comes to Life, held in October 2022 at the Danube Park of Vidin, Bulgaria, organized within the EU-funded DTP project Living Danube Limes. Valorizing cultural heritage and fostering sustainable tourism by living the common heritage on the Danube Limes as a basis for a cultural route. The festival is related to the connecting crews of the reconstructed Roman river patrol vessel the Danuvina Alacris, which sailed from Germany to Romania from May to October 2022, tangibly connecting the project partner countries with each other and their common Roman history, making the Roman past come alive. Our purpose is to travel through the magnificent Roman Pass of Bononia, rich in interwoven history, heritage and culture, shared by the modern nation-states along the Danube. The festival includes Roman Limes troops reenactments, people's lifestyle exhibits, crafts, toys and games for children, etc. The exhibits are accompanied with stories, myths and traditions as the starting point of the discovery for all, offering an atmosphere of motion, emotion and imagination. Dear guests, dear citizens of the city of Vidin, I welcome you to the late antiquity festival Bononia Comes to Life. Why Bononia comes to life? Because we focus on the recent discoveries from Bononia's late antiquity. Because the purpose is to popularize the project through the festival to promote stronger connectivity between the Danube Limes sites and places as well as to contribute together to the Danube Limes UNESCO listing. It is a great pleasure for me, as the Mayor of Vidin, to include the old capital city of Vidin, the city from which two anthems of Bulgaria originated, in the Roman historical, cultural and tourism map, not only of Bulgaria, but of Europe, through this project. These are the lands where Bulgaria rose again after liberation from the Ottomans. I have a gift from my grandfather's field, a replica of a Roman coin found there, on the back of which the old Roman bridge across the Danube in Bononia times is depicted. The importance of Bononia is noted in many historical sources, including the exhibits of the Vatican. We believe that Bononia will come back to life and will become one of the pearls on the Danube. This project is a wonderful way to present the Roman heritage of the Bulgarian Danube Limes and to valorize it. During our travels, we realized that the citizens of Vidin and the district are not aware enough of Bononia's history and the Roman presence in these lands, and that they are eager to learn more about it. We hope that the festival will be an impetus for curiosity and learning at schools, families and the whole city, so that the story of Bononia is passed on to visitors and tourists from now on. About 2,000 years ago, the Romans set foot on the territory of today's Bulgaria, conquering the Thracian lands. They founded two provinces, Moesia to the north of the Balkan mountains and Thrace to the south of them. 
This was the time when the so-called Greco-Roman games were played throughout the Roman Empire. Today at the festival we are presenting some of them. We trained children from Vidin in antique games to reproduce them during and after the festival for tourists and at various future events. The children learned to play the board games of knuckle bones, made of sheep and goat bones, also from glass, metals, gems and wood, to dice used to place bets and to gamble. They learned rota and checkers games, tug of war game, throwing pebbles and ephedrism, blind man's buff, spinning hoops, etc. games as well. All these games develop children's physique, imagination, creative skills and dexterity. Both in the past and now, they help to prepare them for their future social roles. Fifteen years ago, together with friends, we started an interesting hobby, recreating the bygone era of ancient Rome. We design ourselves the costumes and order what we cannot accomplish ourselves. We recreate life as it was 1600 years ago, what clothes people wore, what rituals they performed, what weapons they used to fight with and what objects they used in their daily lives. We research scientific literature, epigraphic and iconographic monuments and archaeological artefacts to offer the viewers an authentic experience. Our association, founded in 2016, has extensive experience in Bulgaria and abroad with participation in reenactment festivals. Here we present Roman frontier troops, consisting of mercenaries from the Gothic population of Moesia. They guarded the Danube Limes near the town of Srištov, where the fortress and the beautiful town of Novae were located. Today, after many years of work of archaeologists and historians, it has become very attractive to tourists. We recreate the culture, the lifestyle and the equipment of these frontier troops. 
We demonstrate the military training of the troops from late Rome of the 3rd and 4th centuries AD. You can explore our camp, where you will see objects and equipment made by the members of the association. We demonstrate the clothing on ourselves. Every year we add something new, following new discoveries and data. We also demonstrate the fighting training of our warriors. I am recreating the image of the bishop with historically and archaeologically accurate clothing of the 4th to 6th centuries AD, which is quite opulent. You might ask, why a bishop? The answer is as simple as it is complex. Christianity was an important component of the late Roman Empire when it went through complex transformations of faith after the Council of Nicaea in 325 AD, convened by Constantine the Great, which consolidated the doctrine of the Christian Church, and the Council of Serdica, the present-day capital of Bulgaria, Sofia, 342 to 343 AD, an ecclesiastical council of the Christian Church, convened by the sons of Constantine the Great. Some of the buildings in which the council was held can still be seen in Sofia today. It took us two years to prepare the image of the bishop as we were constantly discovering new elements to build it. The status of the bishop was very important in the late Roman Empire. He was not only a spiritual person, but also part of the judicial and secular power of every Roman city. His opinion was asked when an aqueduct had to be built or a street to be repaired, or people in need to be helped, especially during epidemics. He was responsible for the court trials in the communities as well. А просто те са били по-лека форма на светския съд и затова са се осланили към него.
Today we are together in Vidin to welcome the Roman Lusoria Danuvina Alacris, rebuilt in a living Danube Limes project. The aim of the ship's voyage and of the Living Danube Limes project is to develop cooperation between the Danube countries and generate more tourism by promoting Roman heritage. Also, to show the audience that Roman history is not only the history of the principal, but of all the Danube countries. We focus on late antiquity, because today's society is not sufficiently aware of this period. It is generally assumed that the Romans continuously wore segmentates, segmented armour. It has been demonstrated during the festival that Roman clothing consisted of many more layers, especially in the 4th century AD, during and after the reigns of Constantine the Great and Valentinian. Now we are witnessing the arrival of the Lusoria and its wearing segmentates, segmented armour. It is moored at the port of Vidin. The members of the crew are tired and wet from the rain, but they are smiling and enjoy the enthusiastic welcome to the ship from the greeters who have been waiting for hours, despite the rainy afternoon that day. But, as we Bulgarians say, let it go like water for 